Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. It's a, it's a pleasure to see you, mate. I've been a huge fan for so long. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Thanks, man. It's nice to nice to see you too. How's uh, how's everything going? I just left the UK um, about uh, thirty six hours ago. So, All uh, right. <laughs> how's everything going? Yeah, it's not it's not too bad. It's still standing at the moment. <laughs> I'm in sunny, sunny Wales. So. Okay, good, yeah. awesome, yeah. fantastic. I mean, yeah, I I realised when I was doing the. Uh, the research list that my first gig was your first headline show in the UK back in 2003 I think it was no kidding uh the Uncle Brian tour yeah no kidding wow that's good stuff yeah <laughs> I have been hooked ever since but, yeah well thank you very much um should we get down to it then yeah let's do it awesome right, pull for my questions all right I mean, you are really busy, it seems, at the moment, because <laughs> you've got, you, you're yeah. back here next month, and <laughs> you just got this country out now, and obviously yeah. it's another on the soup out in the April. I mean, how, how have you fit all this in? <laughs> um, you know, I get, I've get i been getting asked that question for about 20-something years. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I tend to keep myself pretty busy. You know, I, I, I will say that, you know, the thing about me is that, you know, someone will be like, what do you do? You know, uh, what are your hobbies and this and that? I, I just don't really have any. I, I, I like creating music. I like doing things that are centered around music and songs yeah. and, and, uh, and entertainment. And so honestly, if I'm not hanging out with my family, I'm, I'm making music. And so, um, it, it, you know, and, and I do tend to put way too much on my plate, um, you know, yeah. and that's not, that's not just a fat joke. That is uh, really, um, I mean it like it's, <laughs> no, yeah. uh, I, uh, I, 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 um, you know, I, I, I take on a lot, but I, there's, there's just so much that, that I want to do, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, quarantine you know, I was able to write this, write and record this Bowling for Soup record, write and record this country record. And uh, so now here we are on the other end of it. And it's like, okay, now we've got to go out and do all the touring that's around both these things. So uh, yeah. it's going to be a busy few years coming off of a, you know, what I managed to to be a busy few years sitting in this room. Yeah. Um. So when you were making the country album, was it like a different process writing wise? Yeah. And the, I mean, the songs sound, they're still definitely you if you know what i'm yeah. saying but there's kind of a different tone to the record for a lot yeah of it. definite definitely a different process i mean my um so that that album is co-written and produced by my friend zach malloy and we pretty much just passed phone phone um phone uh, voice memos and text messages back and forth and then uh, uh you know for like a month and then we sort of just put it all together and and went and recorded it um you know whereas bowling for soup we'll go into studio for two or three weeks to do the music for an album. Yep. Uh, this, <laughs> my country record was played, all 12 songs were played in one day by session guys that just went in there and just played the record. And yeah. so that's the country world versus the, you know, the rock world uh, right there. There's yeah. a huge change. Um, and so, uh, yeah, definitely a different process, but you know, I've been writing songs with Zach for a long time. Um, and, you know, and, um, Obviously, I have my ways of doing things that that as far as writing and recording and stuff. So, um, just already having those those muscles all worked out and ready to go, um, you know, it sped things along quite a bit. But definitely a, a different process. Um, but really, I think what what that the it, it's really the sound of what comes out really that yeah. that's the difference, you know. Whereas like. Uh, making a, a Bowling for Soup record, you know, we'll spend we'll spend days on the drums, you know, just and then you know, days on and then a song, you know, a song will take a whole day to record, yeah. you know. Whereas uh, again, you know, twelve songs in one day on the music, and then I sang that I sang the album in two and a half days, so um, you know, quite a bit different. Yeah. Um, how did you come about some of the collaborations on it with like Frank Turner and? 
mm-hmm. uh, Uncle Cracker, who I didn't even know was still about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Uncle Cracker had just finished doing some recording with Zach. Yeah. And uh, I've known Uncle Cracker for a really long time. Yeah. Um, from doing shows together, radio shows and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, we asked him to do it, and he he went in a studio and just knocked it out. It was really cool. Um, and then Frank, for, I've known Frank for a really long time. It's it's funny. I started out as a fanboy as he was coming up. Yeah. You know, I, I discovered him, and I was just like, oh, my God. I, I remember he had like 20,000 Twitter followers, and I was, I was like, this guy's got to be huge. And I – I've been singing from the from the rooftops, but but you know, and I'm lucky enough to to meet him and become friends with him. And so, we um, we did a, a weekly Instagram hang during yeah. quarantine. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Yeah. During quarantine, we did a, a weekly Instagram like an hour where we would just talk about nothing, no preparation. Called it yeah. back to the yeah. middle, and uh, and so you know, we did that for a year. And, uh, so, you know, what, after this, this record was done, you know, I was just like, man, I don't want to take the piss and, you know, I don't want to overstep, but it would mean a lot to me for you to be on the record. He was like, of course, you know, and and so he did it. And so, um, you know, and then, and Stefan Egerton from uh, the descendants, that's my favorite band in the world. And and so he was gracious enough to, to play on it. So, so, you know, just really just relationships is how it all came about. That's amazing. So, uh, Tell us about the time you met James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're the first person to ask me this. I'm so happy that you did. Um, I didn't meet J- James Bond. Um, I I lied, and and here's the reason why is because Bond rhymes with on and on, and I needed. I already had the let. I ha- already had the line let let me go on and on, and I was like, yeah. I, I need something quick here. To uh, to okay, I'll just say James Bond. Everybody knows who James Bond is. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew that a bunch of people in the UK would would like this. Obviously, everyone, all the James Bond characters are from the UK. You know. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, okay, it'll be like a little tie-in here that I can do. Uh, and so I also do not know all the words to that song Eminem by Stan, uh, oh, or okay. or that Stan by Eminem. Um, but I know most of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so what's the process in including the uh, the couple of BFS songs you on it? Obviously, Omaha is the perfect country anthem that you wrote God knows mm. how many years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, um, that, that was pretty organic in that during quarantine, I was doing a lot of acoustic shows. Yeah. Uh, so I, I still have, I still have jet lag, sorry. Um, I, uh, I was doing a bunch of acoustic shows here in my studio, um, whether for, you know, for on different platforms or for charities and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, when I would play certain songs, people would like be like, oh my God, that sounds like a country song. It'd be so cool if you did that. It's a country song. And so yeah. the bitch song was the big one of those. And then, uh, Ohio you know, just as it already had that saloon break, sort of breakdown in the middle. It just made a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. And also I had originally written that song with Zach uh, who was producing the album. And so that was something fun that we could do together uh, where it's like, Hey, let's go revisit this song that we wrote, you know, 18 years ago or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and put this on there and, and uh, but, you know, it certainly works. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've got to say, your Seaside tour, so um, what was kind of the impetus behind that? And I kind of think you missed a trick by playing Bristol and not Western, which is next to Bristol, because that's like the atypical, terrible Seaside town. Right, <laughs> yeah. I used to live there. <laughs> well, the, um, <laughs> the Seaside tour is victim to COVID-19, um, yeah, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, we, um, we, we had just been over in the UK in February. And then the idea was to go back and do the seaside tour and do some smaller markets later that year. Well, COVID hit right after we got back from the big city tour. And uh, so we had to delay that to the next year and then to, and then a, and then to a year later. 
Yeah. Uh, and so here we are a year and a half later and we haven't played the big cities, but we've still got all these, these just scheduled. <laughs> uh, but it's like, you know, I think it's going to be a blast. I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm really excited about it. There's some cities that we've never played. And so, um, I, I'm, uh, I'm cur- I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very excited about it. Yeah. So where are you looking forward to playing the most? <laughs> uh, Blackpool is going to be fun. Yeah. Um, you know, I haven't been to Blackpool since we were on tour with Sponge in like 2002 or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that one's going to be fun. And, uh, you know, I, 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 Margate's always a good time. And, uh, and then we just added Bristol. So, yeah. uh, and that, that venue is always great. Yeah. That's the last place I saw you actually. Oh yeah. Very cool. Always, always a great show there. Yeah. Uh, was that 2019? I think it's before everything fell to it's your christmas yeah, show oh, yes <laughs> oh the christmas show okay yeah so that was yeah, yeah 29 well it'd have been 18 because we were over there and god i don't know actually no. that was like a lifetime ago <laughs> i have the i have the poster in here somewhere but i you know i don't know like it's it's a blur um i keep using the wrong mouse right <sighs> Um, so I, I got sent the new Bold of the Soup album today. Yeah. I've, I've just had a chance to listen to it over there. Um, Hello Anxiety. Um, absolutely love that track. Uh, I, I, I assume you suffer from anxiety as well. I do. And it's, it's always nice to kind of feel like, you know, you're not alone in it. Was that kind of the idea behind the, the track? Yeah, well, you know, I um I started suffering from depression and anxiety about uh, about ten years ago, uh, for the first time, and and uh, it was pretty scary for me because I'm you know kind of considered the funny positive guy, um, and then you know all of a sudden you know I I didn't feel funny or positive, uh, so it was pretty it was terrifying actually for me mm-hmm. as a, as a person, uh. So as after I sort of got it under control through medication and therapy and, you know, seeing my doctor and, and all of that, um, you know, I was asked to do an interview about it. And so I did one interview and I was like, OK, that's going to be it. I don't I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. But that interview got such a reaction is what I realized was it's kind of I kind of have to talk about it because of the fact that there's so many people out there who won't talk and about their 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 stuff and you know and it's a it's an epidemic you know and um so yeah. i uh i never wanted it to be a cause but i certainly realized quickly that by talking about it i could help some people yeah and i mean it's daily now that i get messages or you know letters or whatever that are like you know thanks because i talked to my doctor and now i'm getting help or you know, I finally told my parents that I'm having problems and they're going to get, you know, get me some help or it's like, you know, Hey, I just, you know, whatever. Yeah. But thanks for, thanks for helping me take the first step, you know, or, and a lot of times people will be like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, you already did the first step by just reaching out to me and say, yeah. just starting to talk about it and admitting that there's something going on is the first step. And so, yeah, you know, and so hello anxiety is almost like a triumphant sort of parade, I guess, you know, um, you're also the first person to ask me about this, by the way, you're killing it. Um, (laughs) I, uh, you know, it, in that, you know, it's like, okay, well I'm talking about this and all these interviews and stuff, but I haven't really ever sang about it. What's the way to sing about something like that in a bowling for soup way, you know, where you're not going, okay, I'm depressed or, you know, whatever, sad, 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 sad. You know, well, let's make it a triumphant song. You know, let's let's do a thing, you know, to where it's just, you know, this is part of your everyday life. And you're just like, hello, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So um, that's actually the next single. And I'm uh, very, very excited about it because I think that a lot of people are going to are going to be like, OK, you know, this is uh, it's not just me, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's my favorite track on the album. Thank you, man. I appreciate that very much. Uh, 
I see, think it's looking at kind of both the albums in kind of tandem since they're coming out around about the same time. Um, I, I got the feeling there's a lot sort of looking back on the albums and sort yeah, of yeah. There's a lot of lot of reflection. Yeah, a lot of reflection, and I think that's because you know we we were kind of not we had no plans to make an album. We in fact we were just going to do singles for the for the you know for the foreseeable future. It's, it, albums themselves are kind of dead, you know, because quite frankly, as low as our attention spans were when bands used to do albums and we would complain because we had to pay $20 for the whole album, and we really only wanted the two songs. The problem with that is, is now from a musical standpoint, a band puts the album out and people still only want the two songs and you sort of feel yeah. like you wasted all this. Back then, you felt like at least they had to listen to it at least once, you know? Yeah. Um, and so now you, 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 you know, you put out an album and it's like you do this single and then you do this single and you sort of feel like all the other songs just sort of got thrown away. Um, and so the idea was, well, why don't we just space everything out? We make everything an event, right? You know, everything, yeah, yeah. everything we release is just like, holy shit, here's something else. But we're back to it. COVID hits. Uh, there we are, you know, all of a sudden, all of our shows disappear. We had a, you know, two years worth of shows that were booked that just went away. And there we are, you know, hanging out with one another on the internet and basically just doing all these things on Facebook where we just turn Facebook on and just hang out and let people hang out with us and stuff. Yeah. And finally, you know, Chris Bernie is locked in his one bedroom apartment and, you know, I'm here with my family, Rob's in the Poconos with his wife and, you know. This is crazy, you know. Let's yeah, do yeah. something. Let's just let's let's do something. So we got a tour bus, took the tour bus up to where Rob lives in the Poconos, yeah. and uh, we spent two weeks and and made an album. And uh, so the cool thing about that is is that I didn't have an album's worth of material written. It was yeah. like, okay, we're gonna do this in three months. Um, I have this other stuff I got to do, but hell, I guess I better write a record, you know. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that's the reason that it became so reflective in that it was just like, here's the reason, the reason we're making this record is because we miss each other. Yeah. And because this is, you know, it's, it's, it's like, we don't know what to do with ourselves without Bowling for Soup. And so I think that, that just kind of threw itself into the songs going, Hey, you know, we need this just as much as maybe some, some people who listen to our band do. Yeah. It's, your, your stuff's always like a kind of ray of sunshine when, and you're feeling Thanks, down man. it's just that i don't know it's just upbeat isn't it yeah i mean and that's the idea right i mean you know we're we're we've we've always known that we're the after a bad day band you know we're yeah. we're that band that you can listen to after a rough day at work or after a fight with your boyfriend you know and yeah. you know and there's songs that will touch you but there's also songs that'll make you just go you know what fuck it you know like let's go yeah. you know um and so uh yeah, I, 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 one of the things that I think that I make very clear on this record is we know exactly who we are and what we're yeah. here for. And, you know, we know, I was talking to my son yesterday and uh, we were talking about his karate. And, uh, and I said, you know, you, if you don't practice, then you, you know, you can't, you can't do this. You won't be able to get that. He's almost a black belt. He's nine. Yeah. But I'm like, once you get to that level, they're not going to just let you skate by unless, but, and I'm like, so you need to look and be like, is there somebody, be is there somebody better than you in class? He's like, yeah. And I go, well, why don't you just go be the best? Like you want to be the best, right? I was like, that's what I did. I was like, I just made a band and I was like, we're going to be the best, you know? And he goes, yeah, but you weren't always the best. Right. And I go, yeah, we've pretty much always been the best, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then I said to him, I said, no, of course not. But what we did was, is we played shows and we watched other bands and we uh, we we kept practicing writing and pra practicing our songs and, and, and making our stage look good and just until one day we look, could look around and we go, you know, we could at least as far as the four of us are concerned, there's nobody better than us. And there's no better feeling than that in the world, you know? Yeah. And he, you know, he kind of sat there and took it all in, you know? And, uh, and I could tell that he was thinking, does he mean this shit? You know, like, does he yeah. fucking, does he mean what he's talking about? Uh, but yeah, he's, um, anyway, so there's a, uh, there's me trying to convince my kid 
that my band is the best band ever, just like I try to comp- uh, convince everybody else all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you say that your fan base has kind of grown along with you? Mm-hmm. Like you kind of pick more people up than you've... Um, like the music's grown up with us almost in a yeah. weird kind of way. Mm-hmm. Because I've been listening to you for yeah. 20 odd years now. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, but I mean, but what's cool is I actually literally just got a text or a Facebook message yesterday yeah. from, yeah. again, back to my kid from, from a teacher at his school. And she was like, I didn't realize who you were. She goes, I knew I recognized you, but I didn't put it together. Yeah. She goes, like, my whole family loves you, like my, my husband, my kids. And that's been the story of Bowling for Soup for the entire time. Is like we just we're the kind of that band that kids and their parents they everybody agrees. Okay, let's listen to this. We all like this, you know. And yeah. so gener- we're we're generations in now, right? Where the some sometimes like this guy would bring his kids. Well, now that kid's got kids, and they're all coming together or whatever. Um, and so in that way, the fan base is growing. And then also it's just, there's a whole new generation that's discovering pop punk. And then there's a whole, then, so there's this whole generation that's discovering us. And then there's this whole two generations where we're a nostalgic thing. Right. Yeah. And so our crowds are bigger than they've ever been. And, um, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're doing bigger places than ever. And, and quite frankly, uh, you know, I, I, I it, it it's bizarre for me to sit here and say at 50 years old that I feel yeah. like we're kind of just getting started. That seems insane to me, but yeah. I do feel like we have a lot left to do. I really do. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what it is. Thanks man. <laughs> and what you got there. Um, I'm trying. Obviously you're talking about sort of the generations of, of punk pop and all the rest of it. And you manage not your girlfriends. Yeah. How does it kind of feel to sort of pass the baton on to those three who are just yeah. sickeningly talented? <laughs> yeah, I know. And, you know, and, and there's a another thing that COVID took away from us. You know, they grew up and they disbanded. And, um, oh, you know, it's a bummer. It's a bummer because I feel like they were really on to something. But, you know, it's they're, yeah. you know, the the two older ones are, are almost 18 now. And, yeah. um, you know, so they were ready to grow up, but, um, man, it was honestly some of my favorite nights of my musical career were watching these girls dreams come true. And yeah. not only because, because I didn't give it to them, they earned it. Yeah. And that, you know, the, the I wouldn't have just taken anybody to the UK. Like I, I, I I'm yeah. not there. There's I, people pay good money to see our band play. Yeah. If there's one thing that you can always say about Bowling for Soup is we always have good support bands. Yeah. And that is by by design. I want you to feel like, holy shit, we got our money's worth. We saw a great show. It's There's no politics. I don't let bands on as favors. I don't take buy-ons. I don't, I don't charge bands money to come see us. There's nothing in it for me other than making sure that the audience has the best possible time. So those girls had to earn those spots on those tours yeah. and they did. And then they went on warp tour and they earned themselves under warp tour in, in the U S and, you know, so um, it was awesome. And just to watch yeah. them learn to command an audience, you know, from being little girls, they were, they were 13, yeah. um, 13 and 11 when I started working with them, you know? And so uh, it was, uh, it was magical. It was really, really nice. Um, I think that's all I've got. <laughs> okay. the- well, you're perfectly timed, sir. Thank you very much, Gareth. All right. It's been great talking to will you. I, uh, will, will I see you this spring? Uh, yeah, I'll be at Bristol. Well, I will see you in Bristol then, sir. Yep. And I just have my little hi- sidekick with me to take some pictures of you too, hopefully. <laughs> Love it, man. Well, uh, I will smile big. Tell them to make me look skinny. Will do. <laughs> all right, brother. Okay. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye.